thank you so much for tuning in. I am so excited that you have tuned in today because we are going to talk about the moves that you should make to reduce chronic pain. My name is Dr. Jeanette DeWitt. I am a doctor of physical therapy and a chronic pain specialist. And I get that question a lot. What exercise should I do to reduce chronic pain? What moves should I make? Well, I'm going to answer that question and I want you to first understand that I am not being smart, smart aleck or sarcastic or anything like that. I'm actually trying to just give you the truth. And the truth is the moves that you should make to reduce chronic pain is, and if I had a drum roll, I would say the moves that don't hurt. Now, <laughs> I know that seems really simple. It seems really simple. Okay. If I can move in a way that doesn't hurt, I wouldn't be having chronic pain. I know what the answer is that people say when I say that to them. But seriously, you can move in pain-free movements or a significantly reduced pain-free movements or less pain movements and help fix the movements that hurt. Because why would we want to move in positions or in directions that actually hurt? We don't want to do that. We want to move in a pain-free right way. Now, I have lots of ways to actually do that. I take people through systematically, step by step by step, to reduce their pain and test different positions to find out what movements they can actually do that don't hurt. I also test positions that can be pain-free or significantly reduce their pain. So if you want to reduce pain through movement, we have to find pain-free movements or movements that are at a very, very low pain range. So if 100 is emergency room pain, then that is not a movement or a position that we want to be at. But if your pain is a 30 out of 100 or below, that could be actually be a comfortable position because sometimes when your pain is less than a 30, it just means that it might feel like a stretch. It might feel like it's sore because you're doing work that you haven't done in a while. So I want to kind of reclassify that scale and make you understand or help you to understand, I should say, because I can't make you do anything. If your scale is zero to 30, that's kind of this new range. This is where a lot of people might have some discomfort or they might have some treatment soreness or if they're an avid athlete, they might actually have workout soreness, but it really doesn't interrupt their day. We want to be in that level or at a zero, of course. If their pain is in a 31 to 69 range, this is the zone where we're going to start thinking about changing what we're doing. We're going to start looking at, hmm, I don't think I want to do that activity or I want to delegate that activity to somebody else. And if your scale for pain is a 70 to a 99, remember 100 is you go to the emergency room. So if your pain is a 70 to a 99, then that's where you might be limping, you might be holding your arm a little bit different, you might be avoiding motion, you might be calling in sick to work. That is the pain scale reference. So how do we reduce pain through movement? We find movements that are in that 30 or less range so that we can start to heal the movements that actually hurt. Now that's from the physical side of things. We can actually do other moves to reduce pain. So we talked about movement, finding pain relieving movement or finding moves that are less than a 30 out of 100 but we can make other moves too, meaning we can actually get decent amount of sleep. Sleep is when your body repairs itself. So if you are constantly sleep deprived, your body doesn't get its chance to really restore or to repair itself. And that can make that pain go way up. The other thing is food choices. We can move to make healthier food choices. Now, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not going to tell you that food is the cure, but food can be medicine. It can certainly supplement or help your pain reduce. And here's how I know that is because there are anti-inflammatory diets out there. And when I say diet, I'm just saying food plan. 
okay? Everybody's on a diet. They act like it's a four-letter word. Diet is not a four-letter word. We're all choosing a food plan. Some of us choose healthier food plans. Some of us choose not so healthy food plans. And some of us choose food plans that are in moderation, which is fine too. But what I'm saying is that you can move to make healthier food choices that reduce your inflammation so that if you are moving in a way that feels better and you are eating in a way that reduces inflammation and you are choosing to get appropriate rest, which helps your body repair, you can use a combination of movement, food, and rest to reduce your pain. You can make those moves and you can make those choices to make your pain go down, which is the ultimate goal. Now, what I see is, is a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'll do one of these, but I'm not gonna do all three. When you do three, you're gonna crush it. You're going to absolutely help that chronic pain go down. I like to say, let's be chronic pain rebels, meaning we're not going to fit into the mold of a chronic pain statistic, which means that I'm not active, which means that I don't eat right, which means I sit on the couch because I'm in so much pain I can't move, which means I end up getting obesity, which means I end up getting obesity-related diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, osteoarthritis because my body weight is putting too much force on my joints, some types of cancer, some metabolic syndromes, all of this can happen because of obesity, which is happening because of inactivity, because it hurts to move. But if you make moves to reduce chronic pain and reduce pain overall, and you combine the effects of movement that is pain relieving, food that is anti-inflammatory, and rest that helps you repair, you're going to get the accumulative or accumulating interest, just like in the financial world. When you accumulate good and healthy habits, then you get your chronic pain score down. You get that 90 down to a 10. I've seen that happen in 30 to 45 minutes in my office and virtually simply by finding movements and positions that decrease pain. How does that really work overall? When you are constantly making choices to be in positions that reduce pain, when you constantly are making choices to do movement or exercise that relieves pain, when you choose food that is anti-inflammatory so your system cannot be so inflamed and irritable. And when you choose to make a move to going to bed earlier and getting an appropriate amount of sleep, your body can heal itself. You can use the combined effects of those three things without medication or with working with your doctor to start to reduce medication and you can start to let your body heal and achieve overall wellness. If you are interested in that, go ahead and private message me. Go ahead and reach out to me because I want to have a conversation with you and I want to walk you through the step-by-step -step process that you can take to move closer to pain relief and move forward to doing what you want to be able to do and living a life of full repairing, re restoring and full healing and then you can achieve a quality of life that you are looking for. So if any of that sounds like something you're interested in, I want to help you. I want to work with you. Thanks a lot. I hope this you find value in this. Go ahead and comment in the feed and go ahead and reach out to me if you have questions. Thanks a lot.